Welcome to Never Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and this week we thought we'd do a little experiment. We got a little sharpening advice for you today, as well as something that's just unique. Recently, I was at a major department store. We all probably have in some of our cities, and um, I purchased this knife. Uh, I don't know that the brand actually matters. I'm not trying to badmouth the company, but the point of this particular show is we bought a knife for $15.99, and I have the receipt here that we can show you. Okay, so, you know, $15.99 plus tax. And so the goal of today's episode is to ask you, is this on sale $15.99 knife uh, worth it? So it has never been opened. My wife said I'm probably going to have to struggle with these, but I'm going to open this for you on camera. It has not been tampered with. I want to give the, the, the company its due. So let's just go ahead and get in there and see, you know, if we can get this bad boy open. The reason I'm not using an actual knife to open it is, you know, injuries can happen. My knives are very sharp. And um, I really just don't want to risk damaging myself, especially on camera. So... Today, we're going to see how sharp the knife is, like right out of the box. And I also want to see the potential of the knife. I do believe that if you have good technique and you're watching this show and you're, um, and you're you know, learning, that you yourself would be able to make something. Okay, let's get this. A little, I'm right at it. I almost got it. I've got a dog that's um, kind of mad that she's not getting a lot, of, a lot of attention today. So she's letting us know. A little, much time, a little too much time is going to you guys and not enough to her. Now watch me injure myself just trying to get the thing out of here. Okay, so I literally have it and then I missed it. Okay, there we go. I mean, I don't want to hurt. I mean, it's a big knife. I mean, so it has like a cool saya that came with it. Some type of sheath. Everything. So, um, let's take a look at this knife real quick. Let's get a little close up. Now, the knife itself. I mean, it feels good. It's got. It's a full tang. The rivets are nice. My dog is talking. The knife has a full bolster. Um, it's got a rocking edge. It's got a nice kind of a satin finish. The spine, I think, is pretty thin. It's consistent. Tapers a little bit towards the end. Okay, it's actually a pretty knife. It does feel good. Um, so I would say that it actually kind of feels really great. Um, for sharpening purposes, I would tell you that later on, like this bolster is going to be a problem. Okay, so let's just go ahead real quick and um, we're going to see how sharp this knife is. Okay, so I definitely have a dog that's talking like way too much during this video. So if you hear the dog, I apologize. The dog is definitely upset that we're not giving enough attention she is a diva so a couple of things we're going to do real quick is we well, i've got this set up so we can do the um, best tester so you're seeing this right out of the box you know how sharp is this knife okay josie sorry we love you. we love you okay we have to give love to our fans we appreciate your support always so we're going to get a quick test over here. Let's make sure we apply some pressure. Let's get off of the this here. It's very sensitive. We got it teared. Okay, so we're going to get our initial score. That was a really great score. So I'm going to just go ahead and tell you right now, that was a really great score. So my wife screams out tomato 127 and I, I you know and I got to be like you know I got to do it let's just you always test like one part of the knife so let's just give it another quick like I'm shocked but I mean I'm gonna give it its due all right so might be, a great $15. Might be an amazing $15 but edge retention is a lot Having a knife come come sharp and then stay sharp is two different things. 
So let's, we're going to move to a different part of the edge. I'm going to go a little further down. But dang, I mean, I'm going to give them their props too. So let's go a little further down. One thirty-eight. So two great scores out of the box. Damn, Cuisinart. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you what's going on. So if you guys are paying attention, my wife's getting ready to get a little close up. So the way you do a tomato test, if you've never seen this at home, is you are going to remove the top of the tomato. The top is now discarded. The bottom of the tomato is now the top of tomato. It is on the cutting board. And if we have a sharp knife, we should be able to do that. Wow. So my wife is in awe, like I am in awe. Like I think Cuisinart's gonna call me and say like, thank you. <laughs> so that leads suddenly, I'm not prepared for it, but we don't mind improvising. That leads to the blueberry test. And if you know me, I'm famous for my blueberry slicing. I will put a link in the description for that test. Um, as you can probably see Josie over here came to get love. She's going to go lay down because she's like sassy. All right. So while you're watching, I'm literally stepping in the refrigerator. Hopefully the mic doesn't catch. We're grabbing some blueberries. Josie's excited because she heard the word blueberries. So we got a random blueberry. Um, so we're going to cut part of the blueberry off. We're going to put it down. Let me move the tomato. Put it down. And see if we can. Let's make sure it's nice and clean. Let's give it all the advantages we can. See if we can slice a blueberry. So let's see if we can get it to stick. We'll give it a little push, a little help. So it's not quite blueberry sharp. Could it be the blueberry? Let's, let's go with it. This is a firmer one. So we'll go with this one. Nice, clean, fresh spot there. Okay, so it's not blueberry sharp. It is tomato sharp. Not blueberry sharp. Okay. There you go, Josie. You get to... Super happy. So we're going to keep the tomato handy for later. We're going to have some blueberries available as well. And we're going to sharpen the knife. So... Um, we're going to take a moment and get set up. So we're going to pause this video and come right back. All right. Okay. So we're back. We took a moment to get um, set up for some sharpening. So this video is a lot about sharpening this knife as well as sharpening a knife that's already this sharp as well as some sharpening technique. So we wanted to throw, we get a lot of like really good responses and really good crowd when they see a sharpening. So we definitely want to give some sharpening tips. And, um, and then we were talking about this company. So let me furthermore talk about this company. So we went on and read some reviews. One of the reviews was great, sharp right out of the box. And another view was that it got dull really fast. So if you ever see my video called um, Day in the Life of a Knife, or Life of a Knife, um, which I'll put a link in the description, you will see that as knives get dull in your family kitchen, you know how to maintain and bring it back. So we have a, um, the only, the only thing I can tell you about the steel is it's listed on there as high carbon stainless. It doesn't really tell us anything. It does say 1020 on the back. So, you know, that's as far as you can get on the steel concept. It is a stainless steel knife. Like I said, it feels good on my hands. Got, I'm not really a big fan of the bolster, but, um, but it did great on the best. It did the tomato test, did not do the blueberry. So that actually raises a question right in the middle of this video. Again, I'm, we're organic. This is happening. We're having to make decisions right now. So I went ahead and grabbed all the Mori Hay sharpening stones. Um, I got out the 500, which I won't need today. I got out the 1000. That's normally where you start. 
And so I'm actually a little perplexed today. The knife isn't dull. Do I start on the 1,000 as if I'm giving it a brand new edge or do I start on the 3,000? The 3,000 for the Morihe, for the, it's, they're discontinuing it, but it is a soaking stone. I've had it soaking. Um, and then we actually have the 6,000, the 9,000, and the 12,000. I want to give this knife every opportunity to become a laser. I literally want, I've got the kangaroo strop hanging up behind me. I've got some gunny juice strops as well, diamond emulsion on there. So I'm literally going to try to, I'm going to see the potential of this knife. If you follow the show, you're a sharpener. If you're learning how to sharpen, we want to see, like, can we make this into an absolute laser? So the question you would ask yourself then, do you start over with the 1000? We're going to try not doing that today. Um, The problem that can arise for me as a sharpener is, um, am I actually going to try to get a burr, which would be difficult to do on the 3000? Um... You might do it on the 2000. I could start on a 2000. That might be a great. I could get the Brick of Joy out and start there. Uh, again, if I mention something in here, I will definitely put a link in the, in the description um, so you guys can like see everything I'm talking about. Let's start with the 3000. I've had it soaking. And one of the things that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make sure that it's uh, even, it's flat. So if you have not seen a video on sharpening, I'm going to draw a grid and I'm going to make sure that the stone itself is flat. Oh, I need to tighten up my uh, stuff. And so for those of you guys who don't know as well, this is the uh, Tajiro Pro Sync Bridge. We did a video just on sync bridges and this particular one. So, um, yeah, this is pretty much... This is pretty much already flat. Yeah, no problems. But I personally am having a malfunction. I am not getting this even, so therefore it's not staying tightened. Okay, so. There you go. So with that being said, It's like, am I going to work to get a burr? Now, if you're watching on the close-up camera, which this video should be split screen, um, when I go to lay the knife down and I go to get a sharpening angle, there is a point in which if I put my finger on the edge, I'll do it on this side backwards for you. If the knife is down too far, you can feel the edge like sticking up. You come up, you can feel it's flush. But your, your goal is to, there's a point at which it slides. You can tell it's just too flat and up enough that it's like up on the edge. Now, I'm going degrees. There was no, we, my wife and I, we scoured the internet. We look, for, we look for steel. We look for heat treat. It had no hardness. I have to assume in the tradition of, say, German knives, they have, and it's easier to like get a, a hardness. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the harder the knife, the, the sharper you can get a knife. The more brittle, the softer the knife, you can get a nice edge. You can't get it as sharp, but it's a little harder to like chip the knife. So I'm going to assume that it's a softer knife at uh, Hardwell, Rockwell hardness of 60 or below. I'm going to sharpen it at 15 degrees. And we need to make sure that there's, there's water stays on the stone. Um, it will reduce friction. I mean, think of it as wet sanding. I immediately felt, just talking about this knife, I felt the impact of that bolster when I tried to get into the corner. So uh, if you're new to sharpening, I have the tip down. And I am putting pressure on the tip only. So I am pressing that direction. I'm not pressing this direction. So I'm pressing and kind of just riding it back. Press. And you're seeing me moving a little bit. And you'll also notice that my wrist is rocking because there's a prominent belly on this knife that's rounded. There's hardly any really a flat spot on this knife. So I am moving the knife, big strokes. Now when I get here, I'm I'm pretty much close to being flat. 
I've got to get the bolster out of the way. So I'm almost like this. I'm a little bit like that. But I got to get that angle in there and push away. You can see there's good mud on this. So we still have that question, like, do I try to get a burr? I mean, it could be very difficult to do on a 3,000 grit stone. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts and comments on what you would have done. I don't think anything's wrong. I think you could end up with like a taking a long time to do something. I think easily we could have just started on the 1000 and just said, you know, I'm going to put a new edge. I mean, the edge was amazing. So one of the things that tells me this is an inexpensive knife is it got a burr. It got a burr on the 3000. So I would expect that on a really soft knife. So one of the downfalls of a soft knife would be that it will not hold its edge for a long time, which would definitely correspond with one of the reviews um, on the website that simply stated that it lost its edge very rapidly. The good thing was it was sharp out of the box. If you know how to take care of the knife, don't cut frozen food. Try not to cut on bone. If you're doing everything right, you should actually be able to keep the knife sharp. Now, if you're watching and you've never seen a sink bridge set up, I have a pond. I've got this on Amazon. It's a restaurant supply. If you have a restaurant supply, I'll put a link. Um, $10 or less. I mean, it's not expensive. I have a non-slip mat underneath. It's a cabinet liner. Again, something, this Tajiro sink bridge, um, it was really at one like best for me. There are several that are like almost tied, but um, it fits all the sink bridges in every direction. It fits your sink, sits on the counter. So it's really nice, something nice to kind of hold your stones in place. Now, if you'll notice, when I sharpen, I turn the knife over and taught myself to become ambidextrous. Um, you do not have to do it. I think it's something you should take the time to do. Hopefully, I'm able to get this knife sharper than it came. Um, when we get into talking about steels later in a different video that we have not filmed, you will learn that there are just some things you cannot do with certain steels. Okay, so that was awesome. Um, it's a good idea before you get rid of the stone to clean it. You really don't want to put these stones up with, um, the slurry kind of sitting on top. So we're going to go ahead and move that out of the way. So we're going to the 6,000. Now, now look, I went from not being able to tighten it to tightening it really good. Now I'm pretty sure all my stones are flat from a different use. Um, if you're using a single beveled knife, which we will be shooting a video on how to do a single bevel knife, you would definitely want to make sure it's flat. It's not necessarily necessary. There's plenty of people will tell you um, it's not necessary. You will notice that I'm going to go ahead and get the slurry. This is a different grit. This is a 3000 grit. I'm going to go ahead and get the slurry off the knife. I do not want to carry that slurry onto the next one. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly just make sure we don't take the slurry off of this. So the point if you're not getting it is if there's a low point or a high point, it'll stand out. I think there was a little bit of low on this stone because there's still lines in the middle. So this was a great, you can still see there's still a line in the middle. So I'm glad we are taking a moment 
There we go. So we've got everything off. Go ahead and clean that real quick. All right, so. I'll tell you what, I get violent with that. Uh, so this is an Atoma 1200. Uh, normally you see me use the 400. That's if I'm really having to kind of grind on a stone to take it and make it flat. These are in pretty good shape, so I didn't really need anything that rough. So at first you saw me do the one side, then the other. Now I'm back to the original. Now, if you'll notice my technique, if you're new to sharpening, is it's kind of a pinch grip, but I put my finger down the spine. It's just, it's something how I stabilize. So if you're looking in the split screen, you'll see that. Now, I do not expect a high performance. I mean, I'd like to get sub 100 scores on the best. I do not expect a high performance out of a steel that's not like a great steel. A little talk on that I will say is that um, if you can imagine styrofoam with all of its bubbles, there's little balls in there and trying to make a knife out of it. It seems ridiculous, I know. But if you go from styrofoam to like wood to make a knife, it would be a little e better. And if you went from wood to like a really hard, high quality plastic, you might be able to get a decent knife. But when you get into metal, metal is obviously better in all of those um, material. The problem is in the steel world, you have material that is basically like that. You have some that have very big molecules. Which are, it's very hard to get them sharp. And the finer the grain structure, the tighter the edge, the more clean the apex. So there are certain limitations on certain steels. And that's what we're working with. Now, so far, you've seen me do what's called edge trailing stroke. So I'm pushing that way. The edge is in the back. It's trailing. You will see me doing edge leading strokes up to 8,000. So this is a 6,000 grid. I'm going to be jumping to a 9,000. I will do some edge leading strokes on this stone. And I'm moving my fingers back and forth. So whether you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, the full length of the blade, one, two, three, or whether you're a one, 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 or a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, or you can go to fours, whatever it takes that you feel like you have an edge. Now, another thing we'll talk about real quick is I believe that since this metal is soft, I'm going to get something called a wire edge. And I have videos on this. I'll put a link above. Um, that means I'm going to have to strop in a very particular way. Stropping is part of the sharpening technique. It is when we use a material like leather. I will be using kangaroo tail. And we will have metal shavings off the end of the apex. As I'm rubbing this knife and I'm making a new triangular edge, there, are, there is metal that's accumulating on the apex like tassels, like little fringes on your jeans that you wear that kind of scrape the asphalt. And those tassels do not come off easily. And what's going to happen is I'm going to flip them back and forth and they're just never going to rip off. And eventually... I would even line them up to make like a perfect wire edge, which means that these tassels will stand straight up. And you need to know that it is a false edge. If you actually get the edge to stand straight up, that wire edge will cut amazingly on the very first thing it cuts. And then it will collapse like a mushroom over the edge. And you'll wonder why the knife is so dull so fast. Okay, so Okay, so we've done what we needed to do. I'm going to do the edge is now being pushed into the stone. That is an edge leading stroke. Now the edge is facing me. It's pushing pushing in the stone towards me. I'm trying to keep it at the angle that I sharpened it at. 
It is considered by a company called Knife Grinders. They did their own research. I have their book, their last book. Um, and they talk about deburring a knife. It is considered that when you go edge leading into something higher grit than 8,000, since your edge is actually half the thickness of a human hair, that you could actually be straining the edge and putting too much pressure. It is considered advantageous to do it at 8,000 or below, just not above. So we have done alternating strokes, edge leading. I currently believe at this moment that I had made tassels that kept getting flipped over. And right now I have a tassel that's straight up. Literally, it's like I have a triangle and then I have like a wire sticking straight up. So I need to remove that. Now, to make the laser, do I need to go up to the 9 and 12? I want to give this knife every chance that it has. So I'm going to take a moment. We're going to clean the stone because we don't put everything up dirty. Now, if we were commercial sharpeners and we're going to do a lot of work today, you could either sharpen all your knives on this stone or you could just move the stone knowing you're coming back to it in a little bit. We're just doing the one. So let's clean as we go. Okay, so we're going to the 9,000. Here we go, like, Greg, are you going to flatten it again? Um, I mean, I am. You know why? I haven't used the stones in a while. This stone, I mean, it's 9,000. Like, what the hell kind of work was I doing on this stone before? But for the sake of the video and to show you guys good habits... Let's do it. We got the 1200. And of course it's super clean, super fast. That's a good thing. The mud that's on here grabs that atoma plate. It's good that we've created some mud. So if you haven't looked at the Morihe products, the 9,000 is half, it's part natural stone, part synthetic. So it actually gives a mud that's like Japanese natural stones. And that's a whole nother subject. We will be doing an introduction to Japanese natural stones. So right now I've done edge leading on the six. I will not do edge leading anymore. I'm going to, now listen, right now we have like no weight on this knife. Like this knife is sitting, gravity is pulling it down. And I'm like just dancing. I'm like ice skating on this stone. I mean, it's literally... The pressure. Remember, we think that there's a wire edge on here. Now, I'll tell you something we could do. According to, uh, to Kevin Kent, he deburs before he goes to every stone. Now, I think in this particular case, that might be an excellent idea. I think I might want to deburr to remove that wire edge. And then come back on this 9,000 and just clean the apex up. Basically, I would not be trying to get a burr on the edge. I would be trying to just smooth the apex on each side. So with that being said, it's like, do I do it? I don't know. Part of me thinks let's go through the 12, deburr, see what we get. And then if I needed to jump back on there. I mean, traditionally, you know what? Never mind. Traditionally, you know what we've always done and this, we've had great success? We have gone through the progression of stones. We go on kangaroo, the rough and the, and the smooth. Then I have gunny juice at 0.5 micron on leather and nano cloth. That is everything I need to make sure that these apexes are clean at 0.5 micron. So... You can see a really a nice kind of a dark slurry on here. So now um, I'm just making sure that that wire edge is kind of even. I really don't think that there's like a burr per se. Yeah, I think that wire edge is just like smooth.
Now, you'll notice when you're doing the tip that the knife kind of sits up. And then you'll notice as you get the tip that the knife seems to have to come down to like rock to the different part of the blade. So hopefully you guys are getting your knife sharpening fix. You can see this stone got nice and dirty for you. I'm literally just kind of alternating that. So we're going to move on to our 12. Which we're going to clean as we go. Now this 9,000 grit stone, if you haven't ever seen it this morning, it feels like nothing else. It feels amazing. It's just, it's a special stone. I like it a lot. So we're going to put this over here. We got the 12. We got some water on here. Let's get some clean water on here. I, I already knew I get to take my logos off. So, um, hopefully it's still flat from the last time because I mean, you really should not be digging into your 12,000 grit stone. If you even have a stone that that's rated that high. Now this stone is a little odd in size. I guess it was just a little off. Get it nice and tight. There goes my logos. Luckily, they do a really nice thing and they mark it on the ends of, on end so I can know. Okay, do we have all the marks off? The mud is just grabbing it. Okay. Concerned is my stone actually even. Seems like it has a little rock to it. So, is that me or the stone? I don't know. No. All right. So, remember, let's not take any slurry from the last. I'll get a towel, make sure it's clean. Okay, so, I mean, super light pressure. Again, I think the burr is just getting lined up to create that wire. The good thing is I'm still smoothing the apex of the knife. Um, if the wire edge is on there... The, the kangaroo is going to clean it up. It's very coarse crosshairs. And then the way we're going to clean the apex up afterwards is we're going to use like a bench strop at 0.5 micron. The diamonds are going to cut away any material and really help me make it smooth. Super light pressure. Um, this is really tell you what. We're going to pause. We're going to make it right. I have a fix. Where would it be? You know what? I'm going to ask my wife if she will go into the closet. There is a stone holder. If you will check that out, you guys will. We will wait. We will make sure this even. We want to give this knife every opportunity. And I will use a stone holder. I don't know if I've dropped a stone, if I've done something. I did not notice that before. 
You know what? There's something on, on there. There was like a piece of something below it. Was that making it rock? Yep, it's even now. So you don't need it. So somehow or another, I had a pile of slurry get below the stone. And it was causing the stone to rock. Yeah, it's completely even. So that was interesting. Yeah, we're not having any problems. Sorry, Morty. Hey, I almost made you look bad. Okay, so we're getting each side. We're getting that wire edge lined up really good. Now, you're probably asking me, why are we going to the kangaroo strop? And why are we using a hanging strop? And if you have not watched the stropping series, then you wouldn't know. So we'll elaborate. And I'll definitely put a link above to the stropping series. So whenever you're going to strop a knife that is softer metal of like a Rockwell hardness of 60 or below, really like a 59 or below, the stones and regular leather are not going to rip away the burr. They will move it back and forth. You need to strop at an angle on softer metal. The angle needs to be higher than the sharpening angle. So I'm, I'm doing like 15 degrees. So I'm going to strop at no less than 15.4, which sounds ridiculous to say that out loud. No more than 17 degrees. So I need an angle higher than 15 degrees. And so what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to think about it. I'm going to show you what we do. We're going to go to the hanging strop. And in doing so, when I put pressure on the hanging strop, the strop will buckle slightly and it will automatically increase the, uh, the angle. So I don't know if you guys can see me in the video from there. Okay. So I have a rough side and a smooth side. I'm literally like I'm, I'm doing the rough side. You can see I put the sharpening angle down and as I push and it buckles, it's increasing my angle. So I'm going to do alternating sides. Now I'm going to finish on my smooth. So I'm going to turn it over. Same angle. So we're back. So my daughter's traveling and got a little call from customs. So we had to pause. Sorry about that. You know, we like to run through everything. So as we were, we had taken the knife and we had done the smooth side. So again, making sure that the angle was slightly higher than the sharpening angle. You don't have to do a tremendous amount of pressure on this. You don't see me like just bending this thing. We're going to now move. Hopefully we've removed the wire edge. So we are now going to take this. We have two straps. I have nanocloth and this both with 0.5 micron. I'm not trying to talk too fast. I just, you know, had a, the phone call from the airport for my daughter. So it made a thing. I apologize. So we are going to take now that it's flat and we're going to keep it at the, the sharpening angle. We believe we've already removed the wire edge. So now my goal is to actually clean up the apex. Now, I don't need a tremendous amount of pressure here. If I put too much pressure, I'll actually roll and soften and mushroom the edge that I worked so hard to get. Now, in a conversation with Ken Schwartz, for those of you who know who he is, um, Ken has been a leader in products for knives. Ken believes that leather gives an abrasive contribution. So we're going to, for the sake of the advice of Ken Schwartz, we're going to fit. I told you I want to give this knife every bit of everything that I could do. So we are going to finish the knife on nanocloth. Nanocloth is super soft. It gives no abrasive contribution.
Now, I'm going to put a link in the description above right now. It's on slicing blueberries. I'm going to literally show you me slicing blueberries, and I'm going to have another link to a video to me making knives so you can slice blueberries. I have a technique. I did it on three knives. Obviously, the technique works. So, we are going to do a new best test and see if we got a sub, seven, sub 100 score. That would be amazing. We have the blueberries on standby. <clears throat> and we will have to zoom in in just a second to make sure you see what the score looks like on here. My wife needed my phone so we could get a, a zoom in here. Okay, so we are teared, we're ready to go. Let's see if we've got an amazing score on this knife. I want to make sure that I do touch the pendulum here. So I have done it before where the blade was in the fulcrum and I didn't hold it and it rocked off. So I do want to make sure that I have it there. there. So that is the same score. Meaning I got it no sharpener with all of that technique. Look, you know, we don't hide the facts, but I'm a pretty good knife guy. And you guys have seen me sharpen knives to like a score of 63 and 50. So we are going to do it again. Now, one of the reasons that I'm going through and drawing out the wire on this they make these other ones that I have, and I use them. They look like uh, floss picks. And some of the viewers have wanted to point out that they are not best certified. So I do use them for tests, but I wanted to make this as official as possible. This is best certified monofilament. So I got it a little better. I got it to 115. <sighs> so what it tells me is that the steel itself can only get so sharp. I'm going to, I mean, obviously I think the tomato test should be quite easy at 115. We're able to shave, you know, the paper. Let's see what 115 will do to a blueberry. So we've got a couple of blueberries handy. We're gonna make sure they're stuck. We're gonna clean the knife to give it every advantage. I mean, that bit immediately. Look at that, guys. So, 115 is an amazing number. Um, we did not get the steel to sub 100. So we can go over here. A yeah, my wife goes, this is a slider. Let's make it stick. Clean the blade. So 115 is a great score. If you've been watching the show and you see how to sharpen, if you've learned anything today on how to sharpen, um, you can see that we can do it. Okay. So you guys, we made a $15.99 investment. The knife came out of the box pretty sharp. 
According to the reviews, it does not keep its edge. If you watch my film, Life of a Knife, you can see how to maintain it. Um, there's even a great video, I'll put another link to the Green Brick of Joy, something you can just do once a week. Um, it doesn't take a lot of maintenance. Now, we did everything we could, everything. Obviously, better knives get better scores. I don't think that's relevant for your everyday household knife. This knife got an amazing score. 115 is definitely 85 points better than you ever need for a gourmet knife. So it was really great to bring to you a shocking surprise. But definitely, I had no clue that this video would turn out like that. I'm happy to be able to be surprised. Thank you for watching. Every single thing that we use, obviously, is in the description. Um, we're excited about some things coming up just to let you know we, we've got some ceiling cutting boards coming up. Um, we definitely have uh, how to make a laser when you really want to make something sub 100 and get it really sharp. Um, we've got another, sh another one coming up. I'm super excited. Um, do you think you're really sharpening 50-50 bevel? I think not. We'll talk about that in the future. We even have a knife that was sent to us by a company that they want us to do a review. They did not pay us. I did not want to be paid. Super excited about bringing that up. We've got lots of stuff going on. We've got two more stone reviews. I got stones in you haven't seen yet. You've heard of them. You haven't seen them. Super excited. Thanks for watching as always. We appreciate you being there. Um, just God bless. Thank you for supporting the channel. Really appreciate it.